Hello everyone, my name is Michael Covington and today I want to show you an electronic curiosity from the middle of the last century. A light sensitive transistor that was made in a very unusual, even amusing way and I'm going to demonstrate it using a Tektronix transistor curve tracer that's just as old, dating from the mid-1960s or earlier. So let's get started. The light-sensitive transistor that I'm going to show you was a product of Carl Cordover and Company, which is better remembered for products like these, modules with semiconductor circuits potted in an ice cube shaped, that is not cubical, but lump shaped piece of black plastic. These were marketed to hobbyists in the mid-1960s and were on the shelves at our local specialty distributing company, which is where my father and I did our electronics shopping in those days. Radio shacks had not proliferated yet. But Cordover also marketed, in very similar packages, surplus transistors and diodes for hobbyists. These were ones that didn't have industry type numbers and presumably didn't meet the manufacturer's specifications, but still worked and were worthwhile for experimenting. The light-sensitive transistor is the one on the right here. Cordover's name for it was Photo Multiplier Power Transistor, with photo and multiplier written as two words. It certainly is not as sensitive to light as a photomultiplier tube. It barely is sensitive to light at all, but it does work and I'm going to demonstrate it. On the left you see an ordinary germanium power transistor from the 1960s. This is an SK3009 in a TO3 enclosure, very common for the first generation of power transistors. And on the right you see what is essentially the same thing with a window in it. Apparently Cordover got hold of some power transistors where the top of the cover had been whacked off and replaced with a red window. The thing that intrigued both me and my father about this is it's a power transistor where you can see inside. Let's see if we can look a little more closely. Here's a slightly closer look. Recall that a transistor is a stack of three layers of germanium, in this case, nowadays mostly silicon. The collector, or third layer, is connected to the case, so it's on the bottom of the stack you're looking at there. The middle of the stack, connected from the left, is the base. And the top of the stack, connected from here, is the emitter. So now you've seen what's inside a germanium power transistor. To demonstrate it to you, I'm going to use a Tektronix Model 575 transistor curve tracer. This is in fact my last full day of owning this remarkable instrument, which I bought at a ham fest in 1995, very shortly after it was surplused by Georgia Tech. And I think I actually have bought the one that was used by a friend of mine in a lab there for many years. I didn't know that connection until very recently. Anyhow, it's an instrument I have chosen not to keep because I need to make room for newer things in my workshop. So I'm going to show you how it tests a transistor. Then we'll demonstrate the light sensitivity of the light sensitive transistor. I have three test leads, emitter, sorry, collector, red, emitter, uh, black, and base, red marked with white. I'm going to hook up the regular transistor here, the one that works. I said black was emitter. On a TO3 case you put the connections below center and then you have emitter, base, and collector. The 
There it is. Next step is to turn the instrument on and let it warm up. I said warm up because this instrument has at least 39 vacuum tubes in it and it takes them a few minutes to reach full working temperature and actually start amplifying electron flow. But I think it's ready now. Connect this transistor and there we see its characteristic curves. You will be able to see this better if I turn down the room lights. There, a beautifully displayed set of characteristic curves of a normal, well-preserved germanium transistor from the 1960s. These are supposed to match what's in the data sheet published by the transistor manufacturer. And if you've ever looked at one of those, you will know that these are upside down. That's because it's a PNP transistor. It has the opposite polarity. So positive voltage is still up on this screen, but this transistor works on negative voltages. And that's why we see the upside down curves. Nonetheless, there they are. They look beautiful. This is a very well-preserved germanium transistor from the mid-1960s, one that I experimented with myself when I was a very young hobbyist. Now you will notice that the first curve, the one at the top of the screen here, the zero current curve, is not flat. It's, it's not there. And the reason is germanium is slightly leaky. So a germanium transistor always acts as if there is some base current being injected into it even when there isn't. All right, let's switch in now the, uh, the light sensitive transistor from Cordover. Turning off the connection to the transistor. Connecting emitter, base, and collector. And here we are. This acts like a very leaky transistor. There is a set of curves there, but none of them is anywhere near zero, any, anywhere near horizontal. And in fact, there is light falling on it now. Let me put my hand over it and block it. They don't move appreciably. What I'm going to do now is get a flood lamp and put a light bulb very close to it and then we will see action. So yes, this is a bright light that I've brought here. I'm aiming it just at the transistor and as you can see there is a response to bright light. It's not much of a response but there is one. I don't know if in fact this transistor has deteriorated due to age in some way because I recall doing this same demonstration a few years ago with the same transistor and it worked well. But at least it still has some response that I can show you. I do want to show you a little more about the curve tracer itself. It's masterful work from 19, late 1950s or early 1960s engineering and you see all the controls an engineer could use it to set up a transistor circuit with voltages and resistances just like the circuit the transistor is going to be used in and in effect breadboard a circuit on the control panel. You'll see I've put orange dots at the commonly used settings. That's very important for making this instrument reasonably easy to use. Here you see the transistor itself hooked up to the test leads. And I also want to show you what's inside the curve tracer, at least a little of it. So here are tubes and electrolytic capacitors, none of which have given me any trouble during the 25 years I've owned this instrument. Now admittedly, it was calibrated at Georgia Tech in 1990, so it may have had any number of repairs and updates then. 
On the lower deck we have tubes right side up on the bottom and hanging upside down like bats from the upper deck. And then higher up on the upper deck we have components. I'll change the view here just a little. You can see rows of resistors and capacitors in ceramic terminal strips and in fact they're held in with a special silver bearing solder and Tektronix warns us not to use ordinary solder and even supplies a roll, a roll of the special silver bearing solder right there inside the instrument in case somebody needs to fix something. So that's the Tektronix 575 transistor curve tracer. All right, that's the story of the light sensitive transistor from 1966. Thank you for watching.